Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. Sweet 16, Ryan. And how sweet is it? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Border, you have a game recap to, to give out tonight. I told you before we came on, Ryan. I'm like, Ryan, we hardly ever get a close game and usually if it is close since we've been covering this team usually it's a loss but let me say no more this time it's a win and thank goodness i told you i said final score here 72 64 uconn over syracuse you know i wasn't expecting this i don't think a lot of people were um but i told you i said and i'm sure you get my vibe you get my message 72 minus 32 is what you answer that in your game recap and everybody knows what i'm talking about if this trend continues, Ryan, as long as they tighten up on defense a little bit more, I'm sure there's some things that you did not like tonight, um, that you did not like tonight. But in other words, I mean, I don't think around this time of the year, especially March 25th, there's not a lot that you're going to tell me right now other than, yeah, they're moving on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely have a, a lot tonight for uh, the, the game recap, but I'll start off with, unfortunately, some sour news. The last game of the season at Gample Pavilion and also the last game at Gample for Aaliyah Edwards and Nika Mule. Um, but on a more positive note, back-to-back -back games now, both rounds, sold-out crowd at Gample Pavilion. So as you can probably guess, the crowd uh, was just as loud as it was for the first round. K.K. Arnold started us off with a three-point shot. She also had a tough lay-in later and a nice pass to Becker. So a great start to the quarter and the game for K.K. We talked about uh, we talked a lot about Diasia Fair and the last check on the last check-in video, but it was Georgia Woolley and Sophie Boros for Syracuse knocking down some early threes for the Orange. Really hot start for both teams in the game. Also noticed on defense for UConn, a lot of active hands on defense. Three steals, three blocks for the Huskies in the first quarter. Very tightly contested quarter. UConn with this 18 to 16 lead at the end of one. Nika Mule also became the all-time assist holder for UConn during that first quarter. So something special to end her career at Gamble Pavilion in this one. Huskies went on a 17-2 run in the span of about seven minutes. Offense just flowing. Great passing and shot taking for the Huskies. Ashland Shade with three three-pointers in the first half. And UConn just dominating inside the paint as well. Paige Beckers also had an amazing first half, just continuing to put on a show. 20 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 steals. What doesn't she do? And Diasia Fair averaged 22 points this season, 5th all-time in scoring, actually moved up to 3rd, I believe, on that list at the conclusion of tonight's game. But just two points for her at uh, for Syracuse at halftime. And the Huskies up 39-28 uh, at the break. Both teams came out of the half, struggled a little bit, honestly, to find their shot. But it was Syracuse who would find their shot and go on an 8-0 run in about four minutes to make it just a three-point game. Nothing really changed for UConn. It was just they were unable to make some shots and to get it through the bucket. Um, but Daesha Fair did find her shot a little bit, made a couple three-pointers. But thanks to KK and Ashland at the end of the third quarter, the Huskies were able to extend their lead back up to nine points at the end of the third. And what an exciting fourth quarter it turned out to be. Both teams Really just the whole game exchanging buckets back and forth, but especially at the start of the final quarter. But overall, uh, just a really fun game to watch. High-powered offenses backed by solid defense. An interesting possession about halfway through the quarter. UConn picked up three fouls. Two of them were on Nika Mule. And on the uh, pursuing offensive possession, Nika picked up Another foul, which was unfortunately her fifth and final foul, and it would force her to sit the final five minutes of the game. A huge turning point in the game. Syracuse would go on a massive run while Nika was on the bench. Uh, obviously a sour end to, to Nika's final game in Gamble. Certainly not what she imagined it would look like, but 
Ice Brady would have to sub in. And like I said, Syracuse would go on a little run. Ice Brady had two costly turnovers, and the Orange actually cut the lead to four points with just two minutes left. But, of course, it was Paige Beckers hitting a massive jumper in response. And K.K. Arnold started the game off strong, also finished it off with a massive three-pointer with 30 seconds left, and UConn survives to advance to uh, just their 30th straight Sweet 16. Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn <laughs> women's basketball content, go subscribe to listen up to Phil and Rye. Go Huskies. That's words out of her mouth, right? I can't be more proud of her. Great job on a game recap. I appreciate you a lot. A couple moments, uh, big moment, key moments for me is, I love the uh, point in that it was 157 in the first, Ryan. <clears throat> I love the moment where, uh, Sophie Burroughs for Syracuse uh, had the made the three point jumper, and then all of a sudden, I'm thinking to myself, it was 16 13 Syracuse, and then all of a sudden, who responds with their own three pointer? Ashlyn Shade, Brian. You're talking about a freshman and again, it just amazes me. Like, I get it, it's UConn top recruits in the nation, so and so we have to remember, but they're they're human at the end of the day, and for them to be surviving under this kind of pressure. I know we want to focus on tonight's game and what happened, what's going to happen, you know, in the future as far as this season. But just think, man, the momentum they're building for their self, the confidence for that to go forward in their sophomore, junior, and and senior years. Oh my, it it's get yeah. I mean, again, we can't wait to see what's going to unfold this season. But it's starting to look more and more great as each day goes by. Let, let me tell you, Ryan. Um, and then uh, it was uh, Paige Becker scoring. 20 and it was only halftime so i'm glad that you and i'm going to ask you a couple more questions so wait, wait until i get on that topic a hot topic here tonight i mean there's stuff trending all over the place that i'm seeing so far um and then it was uh again ashlyn shade with the big steal like you said at the end of the game and then of course kk a uh, page with the jumper and kk had the big three so with that said let me let me bring a couple uh topics to you up in conversation if you don't mind here. And let me see what, well, of course, you and everybody else like the uh, video, comment, and subscribe away. And it, would they actually, believe it or not, it, that was fast. We reached, Ryan, uh, 1. Uh, 1. 1.89 thousand subs, and boy, do we appreciate it. Uh, and just as far as this, as this big win tonight and the advancement to the Sweet 16, how about 1.90, Ryan? Tell them. How about 1.90? That would be sweet for the Sweet 16 round. So let's get that subscribe button and uh, hit 1.90 subs. So as I go back over to trending post, I see Paige Beckers always has that dog in her, okay? Uh, Ryan, I see one that says, yeah, I've seen enough. Paige Beckers, the best player in the country, okay? Then I see another one. Um, I have to apologize to Paige Beckers, man. I was saying if she declared for this year's draft, she wouldn't have been top five. I couldn't have been more wrong. All right, so maybe uh, one more, okay? Has Paige Beckers been the best player in the tournament so far? First of all, not to take away any uh, respect, I have a, all the respect in the world for the rest of these players, uh, actually in the tournament, obviously, and on this UConn team. Congratulations to Syracuse on a job well done. But my point to you is right here. You knew this was coming. You and everybody else knew it. What do you think, Ryan, when I sit here and tell you, Caitlin Clark, all the respect in the world for her, world for her and what she's done this season, right? It comes with wins and losses is what I'm trying to tell you. We're not going to hop off of that discussion because that's what it's about nowadays, especially in this, this time of year, wins and losses. My question to you, when you talk about best players, all right, mind you, we're at March 25th, like I told you, best players, I don't think they're still understanding my point three or four years later, and hopefully you are. When you talk about best players coming out of a nice score in 30, 40, like Clark has all year, and she's dominated, she deserves that credit, she deserves the commercial, she deserves it all, I get that. But why are we not focused on the players that, again, Paige Becker, she's been great, but none of these games so far like a, a buzzer-beating jumper or like the big heroics. Now, I'm not saying you need to do that to be great, but, Ryan, why are we still not focused on the players that come through 
in the big, big, big games and provide you with that spark in a one-point game, two-point game, or three-point game. Clutch. Where where am I losing people at? Yeah, but I mean, you know, obviously Paige Becker, is, it's been two years since she's been uh, in an NCAA tournament, of course, lo- missing the last one. And I think a lot of people for- forgot about her. Um, you know, and I think coming into the season, there, there was obviously a lot of question about uh, should could she get back to the level that she was before the injury? And, and you know, obviously she proved everybody wrong, proved all the haters and the doubters wrong, showed us through uh, the entire regular season that she still had it in her. Um, you know, and there was even more questions she faced going into this tournament uh, about should could she lead UConn, like you just mentioned, in those clutch situations and lead this, uh, you know, unfortunately, not not a lot of depth on this team. So, uh, yeah, and she she's definitely done it through these these first two games back to, back to back double doubles from from her uh, in, in both of these games. So uh, ju- just impressive play. The, uh, so many adjectives you, you could use to describe Paige Becker's play. Um, you, you know, ju- just leaving uh, back back right off of where she left us two years ago in this tournament. It, it's been spectacular to watch. And I, th- I think she has been the, the best player in this tournament uh, so far. You know, just, just the things that she's been able to do for UConn in these two games and hitting a couple clutch shots and a cl- couple moments tonight, um, you know, again, ju- just shows why she's such a special player for UConn. Yeah, thank you to Alexa uh, for providing us with this little piece of information before we go over to comments for Ryan. Uh, UConn advances to its record 30th consecutive appearance in the Sweet 16 with a 72-64 win over Syracuse um Ryan yeah and again when you talk about clutch I mean again Ashlyn Shade but and Aaliyah Edwards right Aaliyah Edwards uh, gets the double double I saw tonight but again uh man when you talk about legendary performances again Beckers but clutch KK Arnold man her name goes beside of that word now doesn't it I mean and like I said a freshman so I I love how they're getting no matter what happens uh, here on out, I love how they're getting uh, battle tested early and often for not only this season, but years to come, Ryan. I mean, come on. So, and you know, the unfortunate thing, obviously um, it's just that it, it makes it that much more hard for me to talk like this because we all know Jason D'Amico can relate everybody, you know, them diehard fans can relate sports fans in general. And you know, just as well, it's going to kind of make me eat my words up if they don't win at all. But again, man, it's not going to take the love away that we all have for Paige Beckers. We can see what she's doing. But I know, Ryan, there are people out there right now that's biting their nails, just waiting for you know us as a UConn family to catch that loss. But I'm not going to say anything else. Let's go over to comments, Ryan. And this is an interesting one. Sarah, Sarah, Miss Sarah poured the love in for you and I. 1.89 subs keeps going up. Everyone is finally catching on to the listen up trends. You guys are so consistent and we are all appreciative of that. Huskies keep rolling. I'll be at the game again to watch Nika and Aaliyah for their last time in Gamble. Yeah, well, we we definitely appreciate all of you guys for continuing to support us and coming coming through on all these videos. But yeah. Uh, you know, Nika, obviously, like I said, unfortunate ending to her last game in Gamble, but fortunately it wasn't her last game in a UConn Huskies uniform. Um, but, you know, for Aaliyah, uh, she didn't really get a lot of touches throughout this game, especially in the first half. Uh, not a bad game from Aaliyah, like you said, still uh, <laughs> managed to get another double-double. Uh, I don't know how many she doesn't have this season, but uh, yeah, she really did start to heat up a little bit in the second half, but not a lot of ton of uh, not a not a ton of touches for her tonight. Syracuse did do a good job of limiting her in the paint, but again, she she took another beating down low, and not a lot of fouls called on her. But glad to see she did get some touches, got some buckets there later uh, in the third and fourth quarters, and uh, somehow managed to get another double double. And this is what I mean, man, when I say depths, and you just mentioned it, I'm not saying Aaliyah Edwards is, again, she's one of the best Huskies to ever put on a jersey, right, Ryan? But 
This is what I was talking about earlier in the season when Aaliyah Edwards provides maybe the, the boards, the rebounds. I get it, but at the end of the day, you can't win games with how many rebounds you have, how many assists. you got to have the points. So that was my whole point earlier, just maybe for a couple weeks there, and then I took my words back, right, about Aaliyah Edwards' slow, kind of slow start. Months ago when I mentioned that, everybody hopped on me so fast, and, like, Ryan's, like, rolling his eyes, like, Phil, what are you talking about? Well, that's my point, Ryan, because I'm, I'm kind of concerned, especially heading into the Sweet 16 round, like I told you, okay? If it's going to be Paige Beckers putting up all the points, because, Ryan, again, do you win by any other category other than points? No, you, you know, I, I think Ashlyn Shade, you know, what, what she's been doing these past two games with the three-pointers, I, I think she's shooting about 50% through these these two games. So uh, her yeah. continued contribution uh, in that category has definitely gone a, a long way to help UConn. And KK Arnold tonight – um, you know, did did a good job defensively against Jackson State, but wanted to see more offense out of her, and she definitely provided that tonight. So that that was good to see as well. All right, how about a couple more? Uh, listen to this, Michael Lawson, UConn seventy eight, Syracuse sixty nine. Fair is tough, but would be tougher if they had Cardozo who transferred out. I believe that it's Arnold and Samuel's time. UConn will get forty points from both. Page and Edwards. However, these points will have to come from KK and Shade. Ice may have to be a little more active on the boards by using her long arms and shoulders. Yeah, not a, not a bad prediction. Not too far off from the score. Um, but yeah, you know, I think UConn did a, a pretty good job on the boards. It was pretty even throughout the whole entire game. A lot of offensive rebounds for Syracuse. So that's something against. Uh, Duke UConn's next game that hopefully they can uh, kind of you know limit uh, the second chance points from from their opponent I think that'll go a long way and uh, kind of increasing their their margin um, you know of what they're up by but overall I think UConn did a really good job in this game crashing the boards um, you know and and Paige almost scored uh, 40 by herself but they they did co uh, combine for a little over 40 points tonight. All right, Ryan. Again, UConn over Syracuse. And you said Duke is next up on the schedule. Yeah, Duke with the, the massive upset over Ohio State yesterday. I, I couldn't believe it. Well, that's right. So if it is going to be UConn, I don't even want to mention it, but if it's going to be UConn falling short, one thing for sure, it will not be the opponent they faced last year, and that's Ohio State. Ohio State going home, home along with Syracuse and so many other teams, right, Ryan? It can only come down to one. And it is the sweet, simple things of life, which are the real ones after all. It's real, Ryan. The UConn Huskies women's basketball team is headed to the Sweet 16. And I will see you. Do not forget the predictions next video. I'll see you for the last check-in later this week. Phil and Rye on a sweet, sweet Monday night.